another uh, faint or fiasco along the same path that we were just um, investigating. Um, so we were talking about ratiocination and trying to link it to the Socratic um, style of um, discourse. Um, Schopenhauer um, makes a crucial remark in his uh, fourfold um, source of the um, principle of um, reason, um, or in any case in his earliest work, I forget the precise title, where he says that um, we had these various schools of thought, the Megarians and the Athenians and so on, and um, they each had some kind of rule of discourse by which they could say these people are not housebroken or they're not um, domesticated and we can't really talk to them, we can't really talk to them, we can't deal with them. So we can see that uh, what we were calling in one of the earlier talks, the Aristotelian Logos, <clears throat> with the um, Prima Philosophia or the rules of thought, the, um, that this is already um, uh, a limitation on uh, Logos, although that could possibly be an improvement. It could possibly be um, a coming uh, towards the uh, full rightness of language. We don't know that's an improvement. Um, the narrowing is actually um, a raising up or not. Uh, that's in a way, it's a long story how Heidegger sees that. Um, one thing I want to um, bring out is um, in my view, um, the question of metaphysics, so metaphysics as um, Heidegger defines it is theory of the object, goes back, um, I mean, that, that whole issue involves the question of um, teleology and history or how history developed, how open is history, and did things hap happen in the way they happened. So we had people like Anaximander and Heraclitus and the so-called, um, in retrospect, we call them the um, pre-Platonics or pre-Socratics. But did the development have to happen in the way it happened? Maybe Plato wouldn't have been born and something totally different would have happened, for instance. Um, or maybe Plato would have um, had different thoughts than he, than he did have. But in any case, um, we can see that Heidegger is saying the origin of uh, Greek thought is out of um, Anaximander and the um, first Greeks. He actually says um, Anaximander was the first to raise his eyes. Um, but then the uh, rub comes in, which is that um, just because there was a greater freedom um, in the pre um, Platon, pre Plato Socrates, um, that doesn't mean that Heidegger is saying this is the zone, um, this is the region we should, that we should submerge ourselves in the, re in the region of um, water and fire and the elements, elemental thinking, but rather that um, what he says is uh, the Greeks, um, and in this, uh, or better, that um, remainder of the archaic um, Greek echo, which still um, comes down to us, um, this is a region where it's already taken for granted that being is positive or that being is presence. Um, in this sense, the Dasein um, notion, or the notion of opening wants to say that it's um, seen something uh, in that which is never seen through the tradition and therefore then we're in the end of metaphysics which means the end of philosophy and then the crux point is that a lot of people think metaphysics uh, means that which began with Aristotle as it does historically and therefore philosophy but obviously philosophy didn't begin with Aristotle and um, Heidegger basically throws the notion of philosophy back into the um, first beginning, back into the early Greeks, because as it so happened um, through, um, perhaps as in Strauss's formula, um, a radically mysterious dispensation of fate, 
as it so happened, um, it did develop the way it did develop, and therefore um, the whole of philosophy, the whole of theory of the object, the whole of presence can be linked back even to the um, first Greek thinkers who are not yet um, philosophers and who have not yet um, uh, nailed uh, to the cross, as it were, um, these laws of thought which eventually um, come into the Christian realm with the, um, Leibniz's um, clarification about the um, law of sufficient reason, the fourth law of thought, um, or the, which then seals the prima philosophy, it seals the um, first philosophy. Um, but, Aris, but at the same time, Aristotle was aware that we're then inside language and that there's also kind of an outside of language which corresponds to his notion of the um, first substances, the uh, primary substances, which um, are only things we can, which are things we can point to rather than name. So um, on the question of ratiocination, how does that come down to us? Um, there was a, or there is a lecture by uh, Clement Greenberg, the great um, art critic, um, where there were some very canny um, questions from an audience on uh, the point of um, whether our criticism can be um, rational or um, discursive in the proper sense of putting together um, an account, making an account. As a ratiocination could mean um, that we have an account of something and that we can understand it, um, rather than that we have some statements in this style of um, metaphors and um, poetry, um, which could be wise but wouldn't be um, knowledge in the Socratic sense. Um, so the uh, speaker from the um, audience challenged Greenberg and Greenberg uh, concerning uh, Winkelmann, saying, doesn't Winkelmann have these long accounts of um, art which amount to um, rational accounts? But the answer is that they're not, um, they don't involve ratiocination, so they don't involve anything like following the rules of thought in a close way. So this, um, and very interestingly, um, the whole discussion sort of presupposes Kant's third critique, where he separates out the subjectivity, if you like, of um, art and taste, or taste, I guess, is the, would be the subject matter, rather than his um, science of um, morals brought about by the rational um, rules of the um, um, the um, access to morality through positing um, rules that can be accepted by everyone, the categorical imperative. Uh, so this shows us where there's a wide range where speech can happen, which is not um, ratiocination, and this range then does comprise poetry, the classical um, antipathy with um, philosophy is then brought in. Um, so then a subtle question could come up whether when we're prior to Socratic discourse and the other um, forms of discourse, including the sophists and the various schools from various um, Italy and, and, and um, Asia Minor um, in the Hellenic world, um, uh, whether in, say, Anaximander, are we involved in the poetic, like um, the archaic Greeks, like Homer, where wisdom um, wouldn't be made through making um, statements which could be regarded as um, knowledge, about knowledge in the sense that uh, the law is still by many considered a science in some sense, um, or at least referred to that way, um, or whether something different has happened during this little period of um, the raising of the eyes uh, until the... Um, uh, moment of the synthesis, great synthesizer, Plato uh, taking everything under his um, uh, Gogol-like um, overcoat, and then um, 
the new uh, way of thinking um, emerging from that. Um, so I think we should keep in mind uh, when we're trying to go back to the notion of language simpliciter, um, we have uh, some phenomena that are coming down to us in our own time in a new way because of the way the separation between uh, discussion, which eventually becomes clarified as subjective discussion, and um, the end of anything like um, the real belief that logic is uh, science in the proper sense, that it can be contrasted with anything else. Um, that's um, an issue which is still unclarified in many quarters, except that um, it's admitted um, that logic isn't is more like a tool for, for the sciences rather than that it is um, productive of anything that could be called hard science. Um, but at length we have um, various uh, forces at work in the world which in, in many quarters are unclarified, but which take their large clarification from the general um, opinion uh, that the sci scientists cannot handle um, legal questions, scientists cannot handle um, questions to do with politics or human beings, but only about um, planes and trains, as the song has it. Um, um, okay, so um, so we're, we're still continuing on this um, theme, which is trying to get back to, um, on the next one I'll go into the, the issue of leisure, I think. Um,